and uh, Kentucky, and we uh, it finally come to rest. In other words, uh, the first time I ever seen any of it with myself or even a serpent in church, I wondered how anybody would ever do that without getting bit. That's what I was wondering myself. <laughs> I, I'm looking at a picture right here in, in the Enquirer, yes, and it shows a... Uh, brother John Dennison, right. and uh, with him last Sunday in his service. Yeah, and uh, he's got this rattlesnake or something right around, wrapped around his neck, and looking right at that snake. Now I don't right. know if I'd have the courage to do that, Elsie. Well, now this was speaking actually of believers. Now, if you believe, the Scripture said all things are possible to them that believe. So, I wanted to be a believer, and and of course I could speak for many people who I uh, do know that is believers in this sign. Now we're a holiness people. Now what does that mean? Ho holiness. The holiness, yes. Well, that's that's people who believe in getting the Holy Ghost, living holy, right. clean before the Lord. Okay. That's now we're not we're not an, uh, we're not uh, organized. We're undenominational. We're a free people. Of course, the Bible speaks about uh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And uh, we believe in people being free, and, and if you have the Spirit of the Lord, that you are free. Now, that uh, we, we believe that what makes the church uh, that Jesus was speaking about is, is people who will live, uh, repent, and live godly and believe what the Scripture teaches. Now, did you ever use put a snake around your neck, Elsie? Yes, sir, I have. What kind of snake? And uh, what? Well, the first time you did it, what sort of a thought went through your mind? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because I've testified about that many times. The first time that I ever handled one, uh, Larry, I was in a little church here near Golly Bridge, West Virginia, on a, on a creek called Big Creek. And there was a brother, Richardson, Lloyd Richardson, sitting on the other side of the church building from where I was at. And I had heard about this. I'd read it in the Bible many months or years before I'd ever seen it did. And this brother was sitting over to the other side of the church, and I was standing there with my arms folded, almost like I am right here now, but I've got a phone in one hand, a receiver. And I was wondering about how the... Uh, anybody could ever do that without getting bit. And this brother was over to the other side of the building, and nobody told him, nobody told me what he was going to do. But I was there pondering in my heart, wondering if I could handle a, that serpent or could believe strong enough to handle it, that God would take care of me. And then there was a something, uh, you know, there's always two spirits, I think, talks to people. And there was a spirit talking could have been my spirit or it could have been the enemy which is the devil and talking said that thing will bite you may bite you and kill you see that was a doubt it's all through my mind and i said nothing to this brother he never said anything to me he was sitting towards the other side of the building from where i was at and finally it seemed like the scriptures would talk back to one that i just read in the 16th chapter of mark just like somebody speaking it at me and these signs shall follow them to believe and I made up my mind that I was going to try to believe that. And I said, Lord, it's your word. And I, I had spoken tongues before that, and I prayed for people, and they got well according to their testimonies. And whenever this was, uh, the Lord was speaking to me, and these scriptures was coming back at me, like I said there, and these signs shall follow them to believe, I want to be a believer. And I said, Lord, it's your word. I'm going to take a chance on it. And this brother was over to the other side of the building, got up, and nobody told him to, unless he discerned it in the Spirit. That is, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost Spirit. He came over right where I was at, in front of me, and I felt anointing in my hands, and I said, Lord, you said to do it, I'm going to take a chance on it. And that's how I handled the first snake, and it was a big rattler. And it was just like the Lord made him, uh, it was caught in the hills here in West Virginia. As far as I know. Now, who, who, who catches those snakes, Elsie? Well, different people catches them and brings them in. We would rather have them really that way. Of course, sometimes we keep them maybe several months. This uh, Brother Dennison has some now. But uh, he's had for several months down there. But uh, a few years ago, I kept them through the winter this way, you know. But uh, I got so I'd turn them out in the fall. We'd rather just 
people would bring them in, and which that's the way they do, they bring them in, but we'd rather not really, speaking of myself, I'd rather not keep them through the winter. They're a little hard to keep. Why? Well, you've got to keep them warm. They hibernate, you know, in the fall of the year. And you've got to keep them warm, and you've got to feed them. And I, you know, they're... What do you feed them? Well, they'll eat mice or birds or different things that way. Some say they have eat raw hamburger or something like that. They don't eat a whole lot. Hey, there's no fooling around. I mean, you don't you don't get the snakes and take out the the, the poison, do you? Well, I've been bit I've been bit eight times, Larry. I was that was my next question. I was going to ask you that eight <laughs> eight times. I'm glad you asked that because we have lost we lost a sister here near Huntington, West Virginia. In fact, between here and Huntington, where I'm at now, at Fraser's Bottom, here just a few months ago, about three months ago. Today. What what happened to her, brother? She got bit with a rattlesnake uh, during a service. During the church service, and she died eight days later. Uh, now, what do you, what did the church elders say about that? Well, now I don't have too much to say about that. I think people who die from doing something that that the scripture backs, Larry. Uh, I think they die trusting what they believe is right. And uh, now we have, that's more more than that has died from serpent bites. I've been bit eight times, and I do know that we don't pull our fangs or we don't take any poison from them. But now I haven't had no medical aid. All the aid I had was prayer, but I suffered, and I suffered severely. Now, what happened? I've never been bitten by a snake, but I know that it's very painful. Now, tell me, what can, was it, were these rattlesnakes? I've been bit uh, twice by rattlesnakes and uh, six times by copperheads. And both are poisonous. And they're both poisonous. They're just like God made them. And they're both poisonous, and there's a lot of suffering in it. Tell me, how did you suffer, and how long did it last? And and what what, what did you keep telling yourself after you were bitten? Uh, we, we usually suffer. Uh, the first few hours is the worst. Uh, for three or four days, the first day or night or day and night or two days and nights is the worst part of it. They tell me if you live over the first uh, two hours, I've been told different things, but that is the worst part if you can live over that because, you know, it, it's the shock and one thing to another. But it takes you about, uh, oh, I'd say from two weeks to maybe six or eight months to get over it, really. Some of them, some of them leaves, it leaves them crippled up in their hands or where they're bit, you know, on their fingers. Where were you bitten? What part of your body? I've been bit on the hands and on the arms. And uh, now I'm not saying this personally, Larry, but to glorify the Lord, uh, I've been fortunate. This is the next one that bites me. It may kill me or it may leave me a cripple, but I've been bit eight times. And I doubt unless I would show anyone the scars that you would even know where I was bitten. But uh, now that don't happen that way with everybody. Now, what is, the, what is the law down there say about that, that sister that was uh, that, would, that died from the snake bite? Did they say anything about that? Well, there hasn't been very much said about it. You see, they tried to outlaw this in church worship here a few years ago here in the legislature yeah. at Charleston, West Virginia. And, of course, it was defeated because we had some men here like uh, Robert K. Holliday. He was a, a delegate member in the legislature that year, and he... he stood up for freedom of worship. In other words, you or anyone else, uh, or whoever it might be, that they had their freedom of worship. And uh, that's what he took his stand on, and uh, of course that bill was defeated. The House voted uh, to start with, the House voted 78 against 18. And uh, he called me from the uh, from Charleston and was telling me about it, and of course he was kind of, uh, you know, put out over it, the way the men voted against it. Uh, you know, but uh, I tried to encourage him with the scripture. Uh, where Gideon started out with 32,000 souls, and he ended up with 300 men that wasn't fearful hearted, and he won the battle, and I, that was a scripture that I gave him on the phone. And, of course, that, that 18 that stood for freedom of worship, uh, one of them was a Baptist man who was in the member of the legislature that year, and he said if they outlawed snake handling in West Virginia against us people, they could be, uh, later they would be maybe trying to outlaw the Baptists for baptizing in water because that was hazardous too. And that was the issue, you know, that because it was hazardous or endangering other people's lives. But 
uh, really according to the statistics that Dr. Gerard and one of the newsmen of Charleston, West Virginia, brought up, uh, there hadn't been anybody other than the one that participated in Snake Hallen ever bitten. That is, that means that no children or nobody had been accidentally other than the handler. I see. I mean, uh, they don't ask someone from the uh, uh, from the congregation to come up and uh, and touch it. Sir? They don't ask someone from the congregation uh, to come well, up and. Well, and we us. try to keep them. We try to keep uh, the serpents and to keep the people away from them, Larry, on account they are dangerous. Uh, how, where do you keep them in a basket? We usually keep them in a box with a lid and a screen over it, a locked lid and a screen over it. So they can get air, and so you know people want to see it in the box, but what they look like, and so forth. We usually have them in a wooden box with a with a part screened and and locked. Now, uh, when you were bitten the first time, uh, what what thought, what did you what did you say to yourself? There was a spirit speaking to you, or you were speaking to yourself. Do you remember what thoughts went through your mind? Uh, did you pray, or did you? Uh, know that you, you were that confident that nothing would happen to you? What thoughts went through your mind? Well, yes, I've always I've always believed in prayer, Larry, and of course whenever I was bitten, why I did pray and ask the Lord to help me. Uh, I never have uh, really been scared of dying, you know, because when you put your life in the hands of the Lord, why then uh, you can't love anything more than to give your life for it. Uh, Jesus loved the world that way much, you know, that he gave his life for the world, and that was men that didn't have no chance to be saved, no redemption of sin, and he couldn't love the world any more than that, and that's why he really did it. So you can't love the Lord any more than to put your life in something that you believe is right. And, uh, of course, it makes you deathly sick, and it doesn't take it too long, and it gets awfully painful. Now, after it's, it's done, do you, uh, uh, do you lie down after you're bitten, or what, what do you do as soon as you're bitten? Uh, if you'll be glad to lay down after you're bitten if it uh, affects you. If it affects you, now I was bitten one time, Larry, in the eight times it didn't affect me a whole lot. But uh, I, I was bitten also in some of the first bites that I got, and in uh, some of the last ones that I got that made me deathly sick. I would uh, get so deathly sick, especially copperheads, made me awfully sick and painful. And uh, uh, what kind of pain did you experience, sir? What kind of pain, and where did it hurt you? Well, it it, it works on your uh, bones mostly. Seem me like the copper is does. It's just a severe ache, and uh, it makes you deathly sick at your stomach, or it did me. And uh, seemed like when I could vomit a little bit. Uh, once I was bitten in a distance of about fifty-four miles drive from this place back to my home. Uh, the brother that was driving my car, I had to have him to stop eight times to let me vomit, and I was deathly sick, and it seemed like when I'd vomit a little bit, that would relieve me a little bit, and I even prayed to die, if I, I told the Lord like this, I said, Lord, if I'd be ready, I said, I would rather die and go on, you know, because I had a hope that I'd go to a better place, but uh, however, I, the Lord helped me, and I, through the prayers of the people, and the goodness of the Lord, I, I toughed it out. But now there's actually some suffering in it. Well, you don't mind if I don't join your church, do you? I mean, <laughs> I like you, Elsie, but uh, I am not a hanker and I have no copperhead around. I mean, I'd rather look at a good-looking blonde than have a copperhead. <laughs> and what kind of work do you do, Elsie? What do you I'm, do for a living? I'm a retired uh, businessman. What uh, kind of business were you in? Uh, trucking business, transfer. Oh, yeah. And I'm retired now, sold out to my son a couple of years ago. And you just run around chasing snakes now? No. Well, <laughs> what do you do? I have a few mobile homes I rent, okay. and I live in one. And uh, I'm retired from my job, and sold out to my son, and I'm on retirement, Social Security. What does your wife say about it? Are you married? Married? Father of 12 children. 12 children, Elsie. You son of a gun. There's not much TV there down there in that area, right? I've raised, I've raised 12 children. Right. My wife and I, I had my first wife passed away at, at 19 and 50. I had three boys and three girls. I married, uh, nearly two years later, I married Loretta Mullins from uh, near Charleston, West Virginia. And we've got three boys and, and three sons, and we've got uh, 10 or 11 grandchildren. 
I'll be down again. And there's eight altogether, I believe, married. Well, listen, uh... I've run a trucking business, Larry. I've raised 12 children, and I've found time to go to church a lot. And when I couldn't... When I couldn't... Uh, when I had business, I'd go on to church maybe in other states and hire somebody to do my work. But it, uh, it pays off in the long run. Well, L.Z. Priest, I want to thank you for being on with us from Huntington, West Virginia, and, uh... Uh, this is interesting, and it's educational to find out, you know, how different people live, and that's very interesting. And just well, keep those snakes down there. We don't want them up here in Massachusetts. <laughs> okay, Larry. Okay. It, it's my pleasure, and I, I hope enjoyed this, it. I hope this has been enlightening to you. Well, to me and a lot of people listening, I guess it has been. Well, I hope so, because uh, now anybody that's interested in knowing uh, Larry, if yeah. they was interested enough, they might uh, they might be interested. To a lot of the people that's listening. In. If they are, they can find more about this by writing to me, or they can call me. All right, of course, you can give your address, and uh, your address or your phone number, whatever you want to give out. And there, there's, uh, well, my address is uh, Box 281. Let me, let me jot this down myself. Post Office Box 281. Golly Bridge, West Virginia. What is it? Golly, G-A-U-L-E-Y. G-A-U-L-E-Y, G-A-U-L-E-Y Golly Bridge. West Virginia. West Virginia. Okay. And if they want to call you? Thank you. Uh, no, that's uh, Elsie. How do you spell your first name, Elsie? E-L-Z-I-E. That's the way I've got it. I've got it down that way. Elsie Priest. Right. Post Office Box 281, Gawley Bridge, West Virginia. What about your phone number? Uh, the area code is 304. 304. 632. 632. 1603. 1603. Are you going to sleep right away, Elsie? I don't know. I, I kind of dreaded to stay up this late, but uh, I made it all right, Larry. Because here's what I was figuring. Maybe if you're going to stay up another, oh, uh, half hour or so, I, I'm going to give you a number out over the phone and then call you back maybe a little after 2 o'clock to see if you got any interesting calls. <laughs> okay. All right? All right, dude. So I'll, I'll call you maybe about uh, 40 or 50 minutes, see if you got any calls, okay? May the Lord bless you. Thank you. Same to you, Elsie. It's, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for coming on, Elsie. All right. Thank, thank, you ver thank you very much. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. If you want to speak to Elsie Priest, uh, area code is 304-632-1603. If you want to write to him, that's Elsie Priest, Post Office Box 281, uh, Gawley Bridge, West Virginia. We'll be right back. I want to say hello to Charlie DiGiovanni. See if I can get a snake around his neck. <laughs> He's got one in the cab. Hi, I'm Rex Trailer. I'm going to sunny California again this year during the February school vacation along with my buddies Sergeant Billy and the Love Thy Neighbor Ragtime Band. We hope you'll come along too. Mom, Dad, and the whole family will really enjoy this tour or children eight and over can come without their parents. They'll be supervised by our competent tour staff, which includes a doctor and a nurse. We'll be visiting Disneyland, Knott's Berry Ghost Town, Movie Land, Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Universal Studios, San Diego Zoo, Lion Country Safari, and lots more. This eight-day tour, sponsored by Crimson Travel Service, includes round-trip American Airlines jet, deluxe hotels, three meals a day, ground transportation by Gray Line, admissions to attractions, and all tips and taxes. Last year's tour was a sellout, so don't delay. Call Crimson Travel now at 742-8500.